So Deutsche Bahn College uh, is uh, the only one of the GTA colleges that uh, has all of our campuses downtown. Uh, we have almost 170 programs that support our 30,000 students here at the college. Uh, one of the great things about college is uh, field placement opportunities and field education, getting out and actually having the opportunity to work in industry while you're still doing your study. And almost 100% of our programs have a field placement opportunity for you. When our students do get out uh, and are either working in field placement or get out of here and get a job, we do see that over 90% of our employers that they do work with are very satisfied with our graduates. Uh, so that's something to look forward to uh, when you graduate from one of our programs here at the college. Not only, of course, does George Brown have a, uh, a ton of really great academics for you to do, but we certainly have supports and services here for students as well, uh, from program orientations to uh, usable student-friendly space, athletics, orientations, bookstores, things like that. There's lots of opportunities for you to find the supports that you need as a student here at the college. Like I said before, we are the only one of the GTA colleges that is in the downtown core. Uh, this is, uh, is fantastic for its ease of getting to us by public transit. All of our main campuses uh, are easily accessible by TTC. Uh, we have main campuses, uh, three main campuses, and then three satellite campuses. Our main campuses are CL for Casaloma, SJ for St. James, and W for Waterfront. The program that we are talking about today is at our St. James campus. Uh, it is very close to King and Jarvis. Uh, it is, like I said before, very easy to get to by public transit. Um, it is close to sporting uh, arenas, uh, lots of great shopping, um, and, uh, and the great things around campus uh, for you to be able to see and use while you're a student here at St. James. So now we're going to get into uh, the core content of the presentation, which of course is about the Analytics for Business Decision Making program. And I'm going to turn the reins over now to Tom. Tom, take it away. Okay, I just want to test. Can you hear? Just a second, we need to shut off a few computers in here. <laughs> okay, everybody, um, my name is Tom Supra. You guys can call me Tom, and uh, I'm the program coordinator for the B412 Analytics for Business Decision Making program here at George Brown College. It's a postgraduate certificate program, eight months, no co op in the middle. Instead, in the second semester, we actually have a capstone course that has the um, real world experience that you require. Um, so I want to talk to you a little bit, uh, setting this up by looking at the jobs that are at risk of being automated. You know, obviously with artificial intelligence coming in, um, even our leader here in, uh, in Canada is investing heavily in artificial intelligence. We're starting to see the automation through chatbots, other types of bots and things of that nature. Robots are kind of taking over a couple of things. All this means really is that uh, you know, for, in our estimation is that, you know, we need to transform and enrich our jobs. It doesn't mean that they're constantly going away. It means that we need to enrich those roles and those jobs and the things that we need to do as well. So we ask the question of which kinds of jobs and things like that are being automated. I'm disconnected, I think. Okay. Um, so if we look at these jobs, the reality is that any job that has a routine task is probably going to be automated. Um, you know, the non-routine tasks, the things that, uh, that are creative, will not be automated. These are the types of things that we ensure that we need to, uh, you know, put a creative mind to as opposed to things that are sort of by rote. So I usually use accounting as my example. We need to enrich the accounting process because uh, data entry and that type of thing will probably be a little bit more automated in the future. So, you know, what we're trying to do is actually prepare for the future, and this analytics program is really at the forefront of that. We noticed that there were a lot of data jobs in big data, in data anal analysis, and other areas of data. But I want to be really clear with you. Um, we understand here at George Brown College the, the difference between data architect, data scientist, and a data analyst. Um, I'm going to suggest to you, those of you that are curious about the difference between these, um, what I'll suggest 
is that actually a data architect is uh, probably more oriented to our school of technology and you know learning therein that's programming very serious programming and things of that nature and learning how to connect computers together things of that nature um, if you have a certification or a plus certification then that's probably something similar to what you're doing for a data architect not really what we do here at the center for business and i would say a data architect is really someone about five to seven years out in their career they probably have that kind of skill set these are the people that are learning things like hadoop uh, you know spark pig the other types of programming languages that are open source um, it, data science really a data scientist is someone that actually comes out you know about 10 13 years into this career this is someone that really understands the data process they understand uh, programming and things of that nature data architecture and they also really have a really in-depth understanding of statistics and the ability to apply that um, I'd say 10 to 13 years out what we're producing here within eight months is our data analysts. This is what business, businesses have told us that they need. In fact, Bell Canada came at me last year and they told me that they were switching from another university to take our graduates, uh, mainly because of the things that we teach, they're vocational and they're on the ground and running. So basically we're looking at uh, programming, basic programming skills in base SAS. We utilize SAS, we have great connections in this program is actually accredited by SAS. We have uh, applied statistical comprehension as well uh, as to, there's two levels of stats courses in this program. Database understanding is really important to us also. So you understand the core of all the different objects of databases and how they relate to uh, you know, programming and coding and things of that nature as well. Um, organizational big data requirements as well is sort of an area where we're growing also. Data and business analyst jobs are rising everywhere. I think that's probably why you're here in the seminar. You probably have heard about it everywhere. And I have to tell you that it's true. Last year in April, we actually run an analytics party at a local pub. And in fact, uh, we, had a, we had quite a few people. We ended up having about nine students show up to the party. And we had over 70 people. Those were all employers and our graduates. We had a more than 50 response rate. 50% response rate from our graduates to attend our party, so they came back with the job. So it was fantastic, really. And we are co-creating this program with those people as well. We have over 90 graduates now. They're all very gainfully employed in these areas also. This program prepares students to do the analysis of data specific to multifaceted business decision-making needs. This is all about making decisions. This is all about telling stories from the data. So it's not a project manager a process. We use a data process to uh, get to those results. And we have real world uh, experiential learning within our actual uh, program itself. We use insightful problem solving, not just trial and error. And we assist decision makers to, to uh, you know, in all of their own activities, things like capital projects that they want to move forward with. Here's a, a slide here that shows you some of the vocational level outcomes for our program. The thing that I want to say about this, because you can read the slide uh, to see the things that this program uh, focuses on and what we expect graduates to do when they graduate. Um, the thing that I want you to know is that George Brown College wrote these outcomes for the Ministry of Colleges and Universities. All other schools have to follow these vocational level outcomes that we actually wrote ourselves. So it was a team of people over here at George Brown College that created this for all of Ontario. Um, and here's the second level for those slides. I'm going to assume that uh, this is being recorded, Adam, and they will be able to go back in and take a look at these uh, main, uh, main things that we would like people to be able to do when they graduate the program. So what we do is we take those program level uh, vocational outcomes and we apply them to a series of courses. We have two semesters in this program, starts in September. We have four, uh, four months of semester one, so that's September to the middle of December. Then we take a break, we come back in January, and we go January to April uh, for semester two. We require our students, all of our students, to actually uh, pass all the classes in semester one on the left-hand side of the slide there that you can see in order to be able to take 
the biz 4045, the circled course, and circled in red there, in semester two, which is our capstone project. Right now, I'm working on bringing in capstone projects out there in the real world, in the business world. Um, so far, we have about five this year. We had six last year from TD, uh, Canada Trust Bank. We've had from Scotiabank, CIBC. Um, this year, actually, we have a really interesting cannabis industry product pro or project. So that's going to be an interesting one for the students to work on. We also have Cossat Ad Agency. There's a number of different uh, other organizations, all Canadian self-storage. You know, businesses really do want to work with us. And so we have real world capstone projects and that's why we don't do the co-op. Um, in semester one, you'll note that you take six courses um, from September to December. Uh, so it's, it's extensive, it's heavy, there's lots to do. There are things due in each of these courses every single week. Um, and we have a location where uh, faculty come in, facilitate you as well. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of students and prospective students ask me about the software and the data that we're going to be utilizing in the program. So, you know, that's interesting that people ask me for that checklist. The reality is um, I'm not agnostic to software. You know, whether we utilize SaaS software or we use IBM Watson, that type of thing, uh, you know, whether we use uh, uh, Microsoft Access as a database solution, Oracle or SQL Server, really, it's fundamentally not important to me. The important thing is that you understand the core skills of what makes up a database and what the program, you know, that you learn the core skills of programming, such as things like structured query language um, and understand the core of SQL so that you can transform yourself as you're applying these skills in things like an Oracle database where you're now applying a PL SQL version, a different version of the structured query language programming. So we kind of want you to understand the core of these things. In the program currently is Excel uh, to an advanced level. Access is our database solution, structured query language, of course, in multiple courses. Um, we utilize a SEMA methodology via um, the SAS Canada system. Um, and two technologies therein, Enterprise Guide and Enterprise Miner. Um, Guide is used a little bit more extensively in our program. Miner is more for the computer scientist and predictive modeling and things of that nature. So you'll be able to take your skills further um, later on. Tableau, which is our data visualization tool. And actually our current professor works at Royal Bank or RBC. So we have real world people teaching you these things. Google Analytics, of course, this is more of a self-discovery demonstration type system in our program because we are not focused on web analytics. We're focused on the core of business analytics and others as per the industry need. These days we are exploring Hadoop, HBase, Hive as database solutions, Python, R for statistical implementation, Power BI tools are being implemented currently as well. We don't teach them directly yet but we are co-creating these with our current students, graduates, um, and program advisory committees, and other people, including the faculty. Constantly changing and updating this program. It's really exciting, actually. Um, um, it says at the top of this slide, schedule two versions. In reality, there's not two versions. We're collapsing them, and we're going to have one version um, and it's going to be not online for domestic students. Okay, so uh, basically we're going to collapse these in and we are going to run a regular program in September accepting both um, domestic students in Canada and also international students. We're opening it up to international students. We had not accepted them up to this point, but we're opening it up and we're allowing a few international students in to have a nice balance and mix within the organization. Um, where it says uh, eight months and 85% online, that's incorrect information. Please scratch that out. That's actually should be, uh, it should be eight months and 60% in the classroom and 40% online. So we will have a maximum of 40% of the material online. And in fact, what this means is that what we're doing is we are actually going to uh, flip the classroom and put the, the materials into your learning management system so you can move ahead on things as well. And this is a really effective way to teach and learn. Um, we do have an on-campus lab on Tuesdays from 12 to 6 p.m. Um, I imagine that this is going to adjust a little bit as we bring our classes um, into the campus and on campus so that you'll be coming a few days a week um, into your classes. 
Um, there will be occasional online classes scheduled outside of those the times that are scheduled that we have scheduled classes. Each teacher deals with that individually. There is no co-op. We do real-world oriented capstone projects in our last semester. We want to hit that ground running. Um, and tests and presentations are scheduled ad hoc. I usually tell people to book off work for their last semester, or sorry, the last week in semester one, which is pretty much a week within uh, December. Okay. So you can see the classroom option new September at the very bottom there. So we are now, we've made the decision to scrap the uh, eight months, 85% online version, just to be clear. Um, in January, and actually this year, January 22nd, we have a Mentors Day that we actually run in conjunction and partnership with SAS Canada. Um, and we bring in usually about six to eight mentors, a couple of recruiters. Um, we brought some people from an organization called Planet IT. In the middle of the screen there, you can see one of my former grads who now works at the uh, CNIB, the Canadian Institute of, uh, for Blindness, um, doing data analysis and data science for them. His name is Danusha, and he is a former grad and also now a keynote speaker at some of our mentors days. So we absolutely tap right back into our alumni group and other people to ensure that everybody has lots of opportunities. So I just want to be really clear in terms of admission, if you are an international student, that we are accepting people from the international area. Um, the online version is now scrapped. We are only going to have the in-class version, which is 40% online, and we're going to accept both domestic and international students. Um, the registrar at George Brown College can uh, explain some information to you uh, to that end as well. Um, we, you can see all the rest of the proficient English proficiency and levels that we would like you to have in order to get into this. Um, I will leave that up to others to explain these details to you. And that's me in the middle there. I'm Tom. There's my email. It's tsupra at georgebrown.ca. Um, as you can see, there's a couple of slides there for some presentations of our students in the class as they gave their final presentations for their capstone courses. Um, I just threw them in there for you. Um, it's wonderful to meet you. I'm here and available to answer any of your questions about the program, any courses, or anything that you may desire. Thank you so much. Fatima or Fatima, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. Um, I see your question, will the capstone projects be individual projects? So no, actually, right? <clears throat> We've actually exploded out and right now we have over 30 students in the, in the program. So um, I tend to cap, I'm trying to cap the program at maximum of 40, but we'll see what happens. Um, at this point in time, uh, we prefer people to work on groups um, and small groups therein. We usually have one capstone project that is sort of blanketed across the entire uh, program, and everybody can work on this project in their teams and groups and uh, kind of compete with each other for the solution. And then we have uh, individual projects that come in on an ad hoc basis that are real world and so we, people sort of grandfather over with small groups um, to sort of take on those projects and we work it almost like a, you're hired into this project for real. So it works real world really at the end of the day. Okay everybody at this time we'll uh, let you go on your way and end it here. If you have any further questions or you'd like a little guidance or mentorship in this area, I'm really happy to help anybody. Please do feel, that, feel free to send me an email and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone. And thank you to my team here as well for all their setup and Adam and everybody. Really appreciate it. Take care. Have a great day, everybody.